All right, we're going to continue on actually adjusting the valve clearance on this Triumph head here. And before I uh, go through this process, I want to show you a little bit of a warning here. You can see how we have the cylinder head supported in the air. When we, these camshafts are pretty cool here, that they have a place to put a wrench on and turn them over without any cam chain on there. But here's something you need to have some concern. Our goal is to be able to go ahead and rotate all these around so we can put filler gauges in there and figure out what we need. What we have to be careful of though, when we open the valves, like for example, okay, you can see here that this cam has these lobes facing down, meaning the valves are open. Here's where the risk is at. The reason we need to be in the air is because, check this out, so that cam lobe that's open right now, look at the valves. If this was just sitting flat on the bench and you had all this weight on there, and these valves are kissing the bench and you try to turn that over, you're gonna bend the valves, nick them or hurt them or something else. So this whole process I'm doing, make sure it's elevated. I'm gonna be supported out here where I don't do any harm to the valves themselves. So that's the first thing you need to really be aware of. So now let's go ahead and actually do some adjustment. You can see here, this is our sheet that we're using to record what the clearances were, what we want them to be, what shims were in it and we've started to go ahead and just lay out these new shims and this is really important too that you consider left right of the engine intake and exhaust things like that I'll go ahead and zoom in here and you can kind of see what we're dealing with I'm gonna go ahead here and prove to you how this works and show you some simple math so you can take away uh, some of the intimidation on this so we're gonna go ahead and do this one because it's a uh, close uh, shim size here you can see that we were at nine thousandths and we had a 265 and we're saying that we want to replace it okay the replacement is a 275 now for every 0.05 that is going to change that valve clearance two thousandths of an inch in either direction I'll put some math in the video here for you so you can see here 270 265 the next one would be 270 but that'd be thicker so at 270 that would put it at seven thousandths and then to go to a 275 would put it at five thousandths of an inch and that's an area we're aiming you could see this one's at five thousandths with uh, no shim needed that's with the dash line now these are all new valves all new seats we're setting it a hair on the loose side because there's going to be some break in and there's going to be some tightening up of that seat to that face which should ultimately drop us right into where we want but that's the way I like to do it uh, the spec on these is actually pretty tight it's three to four thousandths on exhaust and you can see though that from putting the new valves in there that we've obviously uh, thickened those up a lot so let's go ahead and prove what this would look like by changing the shim and we'll do that right now One thing that's really crucial is to make sure that these are torqued. Don't just hand tighten it and distort it. We want to, we're going to torque it just like we were installing it for final assembly on the engine. Now I'm going to go in here and show you this one, what the clearance was. Close. It's eight, nine. And nine is just snug. So we got a 9 just snug through there, and a 10 won't fit. So with that, we're going to switch out the shim. I'm going to go ahead and do all of them right now, plugging all of these in place. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and swap these shims out. And another thing that you think about is anywhere that I'm taking a shim out, I can think about where I need it somewhere else. So let's just look at that. So we're changing this one we said to a 275. I have a 265 here. I could go down and look and see, oh look, I need a 265 there, okay? I need a 265 there. Now I've got these couple empty places, so when I pull that shim out, I'll just simply put it over here. What I like to do is fill the sheet with all the correct shims except for the two that don't need uh, replaced. Get them in there, I'll be 100% verified. I'll put it back together, torque it, and recheck it, and that's what we're gonna do now. I wanna make a point here as I lay all these out. There's a B and an arrow on this one here. There's a number six. What they had from Triumph here was one, two, three, A, four, five, six, B. You cannot interchange these. 
They are precision bored and machined when the cams aren't in here. These are all torqued in place and then they do what's called line boring to where they bore through there and they're perfectly matched to each other. So these are non-interchangeable and that's a big thing you need to make sure. This is why it's so crucial to uh, use the correct torque spec because as you're tightening that down you're distorting its shape and by torquing it to the proper spec you're actually putting it into the shape that it was line bored to. So we saw a change of uh, anywhere from two to three thousandths of an inch uh, while we were torquing. Plus the other thing if you have dowel pins that are stuck or whatnot don't try and bend them or beat them out of there. Those are cheap and easy to replace, but you're always going to have two dowel pins for every one of these. Another little tip. So I'll keep uh, speeding up through here. All right, we're going to go back and show that nine definitely doesn't fit. Let's make sure a four will fit at all. Four fits really super easy. And the five, I really have to feel like I have to force it through. So we ended up at four on that one. So I want you to think about something here. Do you notice they said the four was really super easy and that the five felt like it took effort to kind of force it through? You know, that's all about this feel. So realistically, if you really wanted to, you know, split hairs, this would be probably four and a half thousandths, but they don't have a four and a half thousandths feeler gauge. So that's how you know what you're between. So go ahead and look here. I just went ahead and drew out our example. We were at nine thousandths, but what we wanted was somewhere in here, okay, to be in spec. And to give this example the math, for every 0.05 of change is equals two thousandths of an inch. A lot of us are, you know, using that. And this is if you're trying to convert it to standard. It doesn't matter either way how you're doing this. Any shim size, each one of these numbers is going to change by that much, okay? So for this particular example, at nine thousandths with a 265 shim, if I put a thinner shim in, it'd give me more clearance. And you could see for each number, it would just go that direction. What we proved in the video is we got down to right between four and five, we put a 275 in and the math just simply worked out. 265, 270, 275 equals five. Our five fits really snug, four really easy, uh, super easy. Well, you guys are probably familiar with seeing are charts like this out of service manuals and that's what gets people intimidated this is not hard either this is you know it tells the measured thickness the correct clearance range no shim required but basically you're going to take a line from here and a line from here you match them up and it tells you what shim to put in you don't have to do any math at all this is a really easy nice chart if you know how to use it I'm gonna summarize this here Listen to me on this. I don't care how expert you think you are, how many times you've done this. I've done this a lot of times. And what you're going to notice is I go back and check myself. Don't just change the shim and say, ah, I've done this a million times. The math always works. We're, we're so human that we can mix these up pretty easy. We got a lot of things going on, a lot of pieces. You know, to get this to work each and every time, you got to torque it before. You have to torque it after. You make sure and go down your checklist. Be really diligent and then check your work. I'll be able to put this on the motorcycle, have no issues whatsoever, have the valve clearance good, and uh, it's gonna be good for my customers. So that's how you uh, change the uh, valve shims in these uh, overhead camshaft motors. Keep on wrenching. If you like what you see here, would you please share it? I'd love you to keep my platform going here on uh, technical education and uh, um, the ways to be great in your craftsmanship. So keep on wrenching and we'll see you again in the future. Thanks for being a subscriber and follower of the channel.